I just want to show a close-up of these gorgeous cardinal pillows, throw pillows, and you can. I'm going to show both ways to make them, one with the Tunisian crochet backing as well as just a fabric backing. And I'll also show you how to make the border. And you have an option of either using yarn for the eyes or the safety doll eye. I really like the safety doll eye look. Or you can make it into a kitchen hot pad. So you can set your hot pads on it. It's made with 100% cotton. This is the other eyeball look. And then on the back of this one, I show how you can use a little scrubby. So this can also be used as a tawashi or dishcloth. It's 100% cotton and so is the scrubby. So you could set hot pot pots on this side as well. So now I'm going to show you how to make the back for your Tunisian Crochet Cardinal. Now if you're making a hot pad, you can use all the same color if you wanted to. For this one, I made, you could use it either as a hot pad, you could set hot items on this, it's made of 100% cotton. On the back, you can also set hot items on this because it's also made of 100% cotton. Now, you could also use this as a tawashi or a dishcloth for washing dishes. You could see that there's a little scrubby part for this yarn. It's also 100% cotton. So, you can use that method as well. For mine, I'm only going to show you how to crochet, Tunisian crochet with the scrubby yarn. But for my pillow, I'm planning on making it the same way, but all in one color with the white sparkle colored yarn. Then I'm going to be showing you how to make the border, the cute shell border, with the red colored yarn. But you could use whatever color yarn that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I crocheted with the scrubby yarn. And I'm going to start with my red colored yarn. So if you wanted to use white for the backing the same as me, then you would just use your white, start with your white, and you're just going to take your yarn, you're going to fold over the yarn on itself to form a loop, then take your Tunisian crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the hook right through the loop. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 40. So I'm just going to show you four of them. One, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish your chain of 40, and then come back. So then, after you make your chain of 40, the same way that you did before, it's a lot easier, you're just going to go right into the second chain whoop, from the hook and then just bring up a loop and then you're just going to go into each stitch back across and then bring up a loop until you have 40 loops total on your Tunisian crochet hook. And then you just start going back the same way that you did for the cardinal design. So remember you always go through one loop and then you go through two for the rest. So now you can see that I have one row completed. So you can complete the whole thing, all 40 rows, using just this way, the one color if you wanted to and again you would just go into the vertical stitches with your Tunisian crochet hook and you wouldn't even have to worry about color changing so you would just go across just like you did for the front except you wouldn't have to worry about color changing so now I'm just going to show you if you want to alternate with the scrubby so here again, I'm just going to show you, that's where you alternate. 
so many rows with the red, and then you change to the scrubby for a couple rows, and then back to the red. So I'm just going to show you with the scrubby because it may be a little bit difficult using this style of yarn, as you can see, because it has little strands of the yarn hairs. So I'm going to show you how I did it. So the first thing I did, after you finish the number of rows that you want in the red color, you just bring up your 100% cotton scrubby yarn. If you're using the polyester, you could use the polyester one too if you're just using it as a tawashi. Um, like I said before, the polyester acrylic yarns, um, the acrylic yarns have the petroleum products that may create a sheen. So just keep that in mind. So what you do is just bring up a loop with your scrubby yarn and then you would just tie a knot. Then you would just take your crochet hook and just go through each of the vertical stitches and bring up a loop with your scrubby yarn. So go ahead, bring up your 40 loops of the scrubby yarn and then come back. Also, I wanted to point out that you just leave the red yarn hanging because you're going to come back to that when you come back you're going to bring this color the red color up to where you want to change colors so say you did two to three rows of the white scrubby then when you're ready to use the red you just bring it up and start crocheting Tunisian crocheting with the red colored yarn so you're not going to cut the red colored yarn So this is what my work looks like so far. I have all 40 loops in place. And then you just work it the same way to complete the second row. You're just going to yarn over and go through one loop. And then you yarn over and go through two for your second. Yarn over and go through two for your third, fourth, fifth, and then you just count all the way back, just like you do with the regular styled yarn. So now I'm back to the beginning, and I just finished two rows. So here's the first one in red, and then the second one in the scrubby. So I just want to show you that it's not that difficult. It looks like it would be difficult to work with this scrubby yarn, but especially after you finish the front cardinal design, this back portion will be easy because it's just one to one and no color changes other than for the row. So you don't have to make the intricate color changes in the pattern. So I just wanted to show you that the vertical stitches are right above the previous row. So that way you can tell because with the scrubby yarn, you have those little loose hairs that sometimes make it a little bit more difficult. If you think it's too difficult and you have a hard time, then you can just use the one color for the backing, whatever color you choose. You just need 40 rows. But I'm going to show you how I find the stitch with the scrubby. So I just go into the next vertical stitch and then pull up a loop. Next vertical stitch. So you can see it is a little bit more tricky seeing the vertical stitch, but I can see it fairly easily. It's right above the previous row. So like I said, if you have difficulty seeing that vertical stitch, you could just use the same color the whole way. I just wanted to show you how I do it in case you really like the idea of using a scrubby. So that's all you do is just bring up a loop the same way except you have your scrubby yarn all the way across for the third row and then come back. So now I just finished the third row 
And you can alternate between the red and the white or whatever colors that you choose. And then what I do is when I'm ready, after I finish the number of rows that I want with the scrubby, I'll bring up the red yarn, drop the white scrubby yarn, and then just bring up a loop with the red colored yarn. And then you just want to cinch down the loop with the scrubby yarn around the red. So I don't cut the scrubby yarn. I just let it hang because I'm going to come back to it. So you can see how I just pulled up the red and then I just start Tunisian crocheting with the red. So I have the first loop on my hook. I'm going to go into the second vertical loop from the previous row and then the third vertical loop from the previous row and then you just crochet until you have the side Tunisian crochet until you finish the 40 rows total and that's how I made the backing so you can see that I just kind of alternated I just varied the rows all through the back you just need to have a total of 40 when you're finished for the backing. So go ahead, finish the backing the way that you want, as long as you have a total of 40 rows, and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far. I have all 40 loops in place. And then you just work it the same way to complete the second row. You're just going to yarn over and go through one loop, and then you yarn over and go through two for your second, Yarn over and go through two for your third, fourth, fifth, and then you just count all the way back, just like you do with the regular styled yarn. So now I'm back to the beginning and I just finished two rows. So here's the first one in red and then the second one in the scrubby. So I just want to show you that it's not that difficult. It looks like it would be difficult to work with this scrubby yarn, but especially after you finish the front cardinal design, this back portion will be easy because it's just one to one and no color changes other than for the row. So you don't have to make the intricate color changes in the pattern. So I just wanted to show you that the vertical stitches are right above the previous row, so that way you can tell because with the scrubby yarn, you have those little loose hairs that sometimes make it a little bit more difficult. If you think it's too difficult and you have a hard time, then you can just use the one color for the backing, whatever color you choose. You just need 40 rows. But I'm going to show you how I find the stitch with the scrubby. So I just go into the next vertical stitch. and then pull up a loop. Next vertical stitch. So you can see it is a little bit more tricky seeing the vertical stitch, but I can see it fairly easily. It's right above the previous row. So like I said, if you have difficulty seeing that vertical stitch, you could just use the same color the whole way. I just wanted to show you how I do it in case you really like the idea of using a scrubby. So that's all you do is just bring up a loop the same way except you have your scrubby yarn all the way across for the third row and then come back. So now I just finished the third row and you can alternate between the red and the white or whatever colors that you choose. And then what I do is when I'm ready, after I finish the number of rows that I want with the scrubby, I'll bring up the red yarn, drop the white scrubby yarn, and then just bring up a loop with the red colored yarn. And then you just want to cinch down the loop with the scrubby yarn around the red. So I don't cut the scrubby yarn. I just let it hang because I'm going to come back to it. So you can see how I just pulled up the red 
and then I just start Tunisian crocheting with the red. So I have the first loop on my hook. I'm going to go into the second vertical loop from the previous row and then the third vertical loop from the previous row and then you just crochet until you have the side Tunisian crochet until you finish the 40 rows total and that's how I made the backing so you can see that I just kind of alternated I just varied the rows all through the back you just need to have a total of 40 when you're finished for the backing so go ahead finish the backing the way that you want as long as you have a total of 40 rows and then come back this is what your backing should look like you should have a solid backing. I'm going to be using this one for my pillow and I have my safety doll eye in place. So these two are going to go together and then I also have after I show you how to make this one for the hot pad to washi dish towel or pillow I'll show you how I have this one that I'm going to attach to the fabric. So I have a piece of fabric that I'll be showing you how to attach to the back. So now you're just going to place the right side up with the cardinal design and then I have, you want to have the wrong sides together. So make sure that the right side is facing away. So you have wrong sides together now you'll notice that the back the backing will be slightly wider and that's because during the color changes sometimes it will bring in the Tunisian crochet work and that's okay. Then you're just going to take and we're going to start in one of the corners to crochet the border and you're going to decide what color that you want. So for one of them I used a red border but for this one I'm going to use my emerald green the same color that I used for the leaf so for the border I'm using my six millimeter crochet hook. So for mine I'm start starting I have the bird sideways and sideways the beak is facing the side where I'm going to be working and I'm going to bring up a loop with my yarn and again I'm using the emerald green it's kind of hard to see the color really well on video but it's a really gorgeous emerald green then you're just going to chain one and then you're going to go into the next stitch and you can kind of bring the loose yarn ends towards the inside so I just use my tapestry needle for that and just go right in and bring the loose yarn in towards the inside so it can be buried inside so now you're just going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're grabbing both the front and the backing to crochet the two pieces together just bring up a loop make a single crochet then you're going to make a half double crochet actually we want two single crochet in between so I'm going to go into the next stitch bring up a loop make a single crochet and then this is where we're going to make our shell so make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through all three for a half double crochet. Then we're going to make a double crochet. So just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Then we're going to make one more half double crochet. I mean double crochet, so yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, we're going to make a double crochet. So yarn over, go through two, 
yarn over and go through two. So we have two double crochets together. Started with a single crochet, half double crochet, two double crochet. We're going to make one more half double crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then a single crochet into the next stitch. And then before we continue on, I want you to go down to the end, the opposite side, because you want to make sure that the two ends meet. You don't want it to be crooked when you get to the end. So I just take the loose yarn end that's on the opposite side and just tie it to the end so that they're together. The two ends are together, the front and the back. And then I'm just going to tie, make a little knot, and then just bring that loose yarn end towards the inside so it'll get buried inside of the work. That way that end won't come undone. Now if you don't have a loose yarn end on that side, you can just use a stitch marker. Just place a little stitch marker there or a safety clip. So now you're ready to continue on. So I made one single crochet into the next stitch over. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch. And then that's where I'm going to make my shell. So I'm going to make another shell with you. I'm holding the two edges together. So I'm going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three. Then you're going to make two double crochet. So yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and then you're going to make one more double crochet in the same stitch. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. A single crochet into the next stitch. A single crochet into the next stitch. And then that's where you'll make your shell. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. And if you're making a pillow, you're going to leave the bottom unworked. So go ahead, finish making your shell all the way around. First, actually, make your shells all the way to the edge and I'll help you turn the corner. So now, this is how my work looks along the side. It looks really pretty, and I have my shells all along the edge. And this is where you can decide if you think your shells are too close together, or if you want to add another single crochet space in between. But I like mine this way, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now the other thing you want to do is plan your shell around the corner. So I just finished a shell and I made one single crochet into the next stitch. So this time I'm going to plan on where I want to make my shell. So I'm going to be making my shell in the corner. So I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet into the corner. And then I'm going to make the shell right into the corner space. Let's so make a half double crochet. And then I'm going to make two double crochet into the same corner space. And then a half double crochet. and then a single crochet into the next stitch. And the next stitch is on the top 
of the work. So now I'm going to be working the shell across the top of the work. Now when you're turning a corner, you can put an extra single crochet into the same stitch, and then that helps to keep the corner lying flat. So I'm just going to make one extra single crochet into that corner to help that corner lie flat. Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and I'm working into the space of both to make a single crochet and then in the next space is where I'll create the shell. So going into the next space make a single crochet and then I'm going to make my shell into the same space. So then you're just going to make your shells the same way that you did on the side along the side and then when you get to the next corner you'll try to match the spaces in between the shells so that your shell falls into the corner. So now a single crochet into the next space, single crochet into the next space, and then I'm going to make my shell into the next space. So go ahead, finish, creating your shells all around your work, connecting the back side to your work. If you're making a pillow, like I said, leave the bottom unworked because we need to place the stuffing inside. So now this is what it looks like on the back. And then on the front, you have your beautiful cardinal. And the shell border looks really pretty. So it does curve just a little bit on the sides, so you can kind of block it down. It turns out really pretty. And then now, if you're making a pillow, this is where you're going to go ahead and stuff the inside with some craft stuffing before you finish the rest of the border. And if you're making just a hot pad or a tawashi, you can go ahead and finish the border. It's turning out really beautiful. So you can see I just added a little bit of stuffing, a little bit of craft stuffing. Make sure you get it into the corners along the top. Don't overstuff it before you finish closing. So then you just continue with your shells all along the bottom. So I finished my last corner shell. And when you finish your last shell, you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made. And then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take and bury your loose yarn in. Just take your tapestry needle or darning needle and then just take and weave the yarn, loose yarn end, through your work. And then you can just cut the loose yarn end. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit with the yarn, make it harder for it to come out. And then I'm just going to trim it. And then your pillow is all finished. I really love how this turned out. I love this method for making an adorable graphic pillow and it was really quick to make too. So here's the front and then here's the back. So here's a close-up of the pillow that I made for this cardinal. It really turned out beautiful. I love this method for making these graphic pillows. I'm just going to give you the size of it. So the length is approximately 11 inches across from the um, border to border. And then from border to border, top to bottom is about 13 inches. So now I'm going to show you how to make the fabric backing. I cut out a piece of fabric that's about an inch border around. So it has about an inch around and I chose the one with the cardinals on it really pretty. And the first thing that you're going to do 
is choose the color that you want for your border. So for one pillow I used my emerald green, but for this border I'm going to choose to use my red colored yarn. So you would go ahead and get the color yarn that you want on your tapestry needle. And I cut off a fairly large size that I'm going to work with because I don't like to have to run out as I'm making my embroidery stitch. So you're going to place your fabric so that the right side is facing up and then just take your tapestry needle or darning needle and I use the one with the sharper end and you're going to start in the corner you're going to come up from the wrong side and I'm coming in about let's see how many centimeters that is it's not quite an inch so I it's about two centimeters so approximately two centimeter for the border and then just bring up your yarn and you're going to leave a good amount of loose yarn in for tying your knot. Then you're going to take the yarn and bring it over at about a 45 degree angle. And the loop of the yarn is going to be going out this way. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go right next to where you came up. So you're going right next to where you came up out from the wrong side and then you're going to not go all the way through and you're going to bring the tip of the needle back up about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half and then bring the tip of the needle through the loop that's created by the yarn and then the yarn's going to come up through the center of the loop and then the loop is going to cinch down on the yarn to complete an embroidery stitch and then you'll just bring the yarn over to the side again at a 45 degree angle. Take your tapestry needle and you don't want to go inside of the loop. It'll just undo your embroidery stitch. You want to go just outside of the loop. And you're trying to maintain your two centimeter, approximately two centimeter border. And then you're going to come up again about a centimeter. Bring your needle through the center of the loop created by your yarn and cinch that loop down and that's how you create your embroidery stitch and you're going to repeat that all the way down the edge and then when you reach the, e the end of the edge come back and I'll show you how you turn your corner but you just keep repeating your embroidery stitch trying to keep it as straight as possible and create your stitch all the way along the side and then come back. So now you can see that I reached the end. So I just finished my last embroidery stitch then I'm going to go just outside of the loop and I'm going to go back through to the wrong side. But I'm going to go all the way through to the wrong side and then I'm going to turn my work because I'm going to start along the top now making my embroidery stitch so I just take my tapestry needle I'm going to come up just outside of the loop and then come up all the way and we're going to come back to down here and tie a knot later on that so just leave that for now then you're just going to take and the same way that you did before you just take and make your embroidery stitch along the top and you're going to repeat this until you finished going all the way around your work so when I run out of yarn I'll come back and I'll show you how I add more So now I'm getting short on my yarn, so I want to leave enough of a loose yarn in for tying a knot and burying into my work. So I'm going to take and bring the yarn just outside the loop to the wrong side. And then I'm going to get some more yarn onto my tapestry needle. Then you just bring up your new yarn just outside of the previous embroidery stitch just tie a knot then you're ready to continue on 
with your new yarn. So now you can see that I have, this is the wrong side, and I just tied knots wherever I had the loose yarn ends. And I'm just going to put them towards the center. But if you wanted to bury your loose yarn end, just use your tapestry needle and you can just weave it through the wrong side. And then you can tie a knot. and then you can just kind of trim it just for extra security but I'm not going to do that with mine I'm just showing you on video tutorial what you can do I'm going to leave mine all towards the wrong side and they're just going to get buried within the um, I'm making a pillow out of this one so it's just going to be buried within the pillow so now you're ready to make sure that you know which way your cardinal is facing because you don't want to put it upside down when you're ready to crochet. Then you're just going to turn your work over so that the wrong side is facing up. Then take your cardinal design and place it right on top so that the wrong sides are together. So the right side will be facing up and then you can see that my cardinal is facing upwards and the cardinals are facing upwards on the back too. So you want them facing the same direction. Then you're going to turn your work so that you can start in the corner. And I'm using my six millimeter crochet hook again to crochet the border. Then you're just going to take your yarn So you're going to take your crochet hook, go right into the corner stitch, and then you're going to turn your work on the corner so that you go into the first embroidery stitch. I'm going to go into the one on the corner here because it's closest to the corner. You want to grab both loops of that embroidery stitch, and then you're going to bring up a loop with your yarn and then tie a knot then you can chain one then you're going to go into the next stitch and then you want to go into the next embroidery stitch bring up a loop and then make a single crochet and then what you want to do we've already joined the edge but you want to make sure that the opposite edge will meet up so you're going to go down to the opposite edge and I use my loose yarn end but if you have a safety pin or a um, stitch marker you can use that too but I'm just going to use my loose yarn end and I'm going to flip the corner down and I'm just going to tie a knot into that corner so that the edge will line up with the opposite side embroidery stitch because you want the edges to line up and then you're ready to resume making the shell border so you can evenly space your shells as far apart as you want. So this first joining will count as your first stitch and then the next stitch is your second single crochet. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to go into the next embroidery stitch. Now you may have to put a couple of stitches into the same embroidery stitch. So you're going to see how it lines up to make sure that your stitches are in line. 
and then I'm going to make another single crochet and I'm going to make my shell into the same stitch. So I'm going to make a half double crochet, two double crochet, and then another half double crochet into the same stitch to complete a shell and then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then you're just going to continue joining the two edges and making your stitches and spacing them so that the embroidery stitch is lined up with your stitches and like I said you may do a couple of stitches into the same embroidery stitch and this is what it looks like on the opposite side so go ahead finish making your shells and making sure that your stitches all line up until you reach the edge and then come back. So this is what it looks like after I finished one edge. So it lined up perfectly and then this is what it looks like on the other side. So I was able to fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve shells but you don't have to have the same as me. The main thing is getting the back fabric to line up with the front fabric. And then, once I made my shell, last shell, along the side, I want to make a shell in the corner. So, I have the corner here, and I'm going to go right into that corner stitch, right on the top. So it's actually along the top edge, I'm in the corner, and I'm going to go into that first embroidery stitch along the top, to make my corner shell then I'm going to go right along the top into the next stitch along the top and then I'm going to go into the same embroidery stitch for a single crochet and then I want to make two single crochet into the same stitch to help the corner lie flat and then I'm going to go into the next stitch and go into the same embroidery stitch both loops of the embroidery stitch for a single crochet and another shell. And then that's how you turn the corner. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then I'm ready to go into the next embroidery stitch on the back. Then you just need to line up the next corner. So I'm going to take and line up, make sure that I'm going to be able to line up on the next corner. So I'm going to go ahead and just use one of my clips, but you can use a safety pin or a stitch marker. I just have this handy close by so I'm going to use that. And then you just resume making your border. So go ahead finish making your border. If you're making a pillow like me leave the bottom unworked and come back so we can stuff it together. So I just wanted to show you that sometimes you may have to work more stitches into one embroidery stitch. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So here I just finished a single crochet and I'm going into the next stitch and I'm going under the embroidery stitch for my first 
second single crochet and then I'm going into the same embroidery stitch for my third to make my shell and then I'm going to go into the next stitch for my single crochet and I'm going into a new embroidery stitch for a single crochet and then I'm going to bring I still have a little bit of a gap so I'm going to close that gap for the front so I'm going to bring over the next single crochet into the same embroidery stitch and then I'm going to go ahead and bring my third one into the same embroidery stitch and then just make a, sing a shell into the same embroidery stitch and then I'm ready to bring my next shell single crochet into the next embroidery stitch single crochet and then I'm going to bring over my next stitch into the same embroidery stitch next single crochet into the same embroidery stitch and that just brings the front closer and then I'm going to make another shell so you can see how it kind of brings the front fabric in line with the back. So you could put more than one stitch in to make the front and the back meet up. So now I just wanted to show you I turned the, the corner again and this is what it looks like along the top and again I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then I have one in each of the corners and then on the back let me just show you what it's looking like on the back so on the back it's looking really good. I have a little bit of the face of one of the cardinals there. And then of course I have the one cardinal right here and some of the other birds. And then this loose yarn end I can bury later. Somehow I didn't have that in there. But it's looking good. It's lining up. And I love how it's turning out. Then you just continue. So go ahead, finish the other, the other side and then Again, if you're making the pillow, leave the bottom open. So this is how my work looks so far. And I was able to line up the back fabric. So the back fabric looks really good. So now I'm ready to stuff the pillow with some craft stuffing. So I put craft stuffing in it and this back fabric is just absolutely gorgeous. I love that on the back and then the front also. So then you can take, make sure you don't overstuff it and then you can finish crocheting the border just like you've done for all the other sides until it's completely closed. Now I finished the bottom. Looks really good. Then I finished my shell on the corner when you're finished with your last shell on the corner then you just want to make a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made so just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops Whoop. try that again both loops on the hook and then go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work Then you have a little adorable cardinal pillow. Or if you wanted to make a hot pad, you could do that as well. And then on the back, you have a gorgeous design for your pillow. I really love how this one turned out. So now I'm just going to show you how I buried the loose yarn ends. So I just took my tapestry needle. And then I'm just going to take and just bury just going right within the pillow and then bring out that loose yarn end 
and then just trim it. Then you have your pillow all finished. turned out really well. I really like how it turned out.